So it's the last day in July 2012, July 31st, 2012. The election's coming up in November. We got three more months, July, August, September, October. Three more months coming down to the day of judgment when America says we're going to go back to the Bush policies or we're going to give Obama another chance. Pepsi or Coke, we get two choices for our representatives. Hopefully third party candidates can pull Obama farther to the left, but right now both the right and the left are running to the middle. They use the Nixtonian strategy, going to the base during the primaries and then going to the middle during the general election. They all do it. They're doing it now. Actually, Romney's going to Israel and he's making a bunch of uh, he's been making a bunch of provoking comments. Uh, he's trying to get like some nuclear war started because he's a dick. Some Kentucky news. Um, it was a wild ride, police say, that put three young children in danger. A mother is accused of driving drunk and then crashing her car twice with her children inside. Lexington police got a call of a woman and her th three children wandered around Masterson Station Wednesday night claiming someone stole their car. To neighbors, the story sounded fishy, so when Lexington police started asking questions, they got their answers. They say 24-year-old Linda Harwood was driving drunk around Georgetown with three children in tow Wednesday evening. They say she hit a car and drove off into Fayette County where she crashed into a tree on Spur Road. The car caught fire. And police say she and the three children ran off into the nearby Masterson Station. At first, she told police someone stole her car. Firefighters and officers checked the children for injuries and stayed with them until their grandparents picked them up. Harwood is charged with three counts of wanton endangerment, leaving the scene of an accident and falsely reporting an incident. This is WKYT 27 News. So, so a woman's driving drunk with her three kids. She's driving drunk. She crashes once and she crashes into a tree. Like, what the fuck, Kentucky? Come on, Lexington. We can do better than that. Another Lexington woman. So, Lexington, man, you, you all just got a bunch of winners, don't you? UK, I thought, you know, you know besides UK, is there anything else going on in Lexington? I know you all ain't a real city. That skyscraper, you think that's a skyscraper? That blue building, that ain't no skyscraper. Lexington ain't even close to the city. Louisville's not even a real city compared to LA or Chicago, New York. Well, Lexington is just a town. It's a rural town. Lexington is Bumpkinville. Back, backwards, criminal Bumpkinville. Meth. Head capital of Kentucky. So, a Lexington woman received a 30 month federal prison sentence for threatening to kill U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell. 30 month federal prison sentence. 30 month federal prison sentence for threatening to kill U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell. So, that's like two and a half years, two and a half years behind bar for threatening to kill Mitch McConnell, the U.S. Senator of Kentucky, who is embarrassing Kentucky and I have uh, very little sympathy for anything that happens to him, but I guess evidently you, if you say that you're going to do anything to him, then you go to jail for two and a half years. Um, whatever, there's a Lexington woman, U.S. District Judge Jennifer B. Kaufman sentenced 50-year-old Susan Mary Collins Thursday for mailing a threatening communication. So mailing threatening communication, I guess they wrote it in a letter. Collins previously admitted that on September 2nd of last year, she mailed a letter threatening to kill Senator McConnell. So she didn't even say it or, you know, go up to him. She just wrote a letter saying that she was going to do it. According to Collins' plea agreement, McConnell perceived her letter as a genuine threat that could cause him harm. Collins will have to serve 85% of her prison sentence. So she's going to uh, jail for nearly three years. So Lexington, you all threatened senators, you all... Driving drunk with your kids. Come on, Lexington. Y'all can do better than that, Lexington. Well, I guess not. University of Kentucky employee is charged in connection with four Lexington bank robberies. So, Lexington, y'all have quit employing people at UK that's bank robbers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the situation for all these. These are all real sensationalized accounts. Um, but this is July 28, 2012. The other ones are recently. It's July 31st. Um, I get a lot of these news stories from Google and from uh, Page One Kentucky. It's how I fish through uh, a bunch of articles. And um, 
Yeah, so that's that's where I'm getting these from. So they're sensational. They're corporate media. That's what the corporate media does. They only care about the bloodshed. They don't care about the solutions or the heroes that have solved these problems. So the police had arrested Crystal R. Little, 29, shortly after a bank robbery in Lexington on Saturday morning and charged her in connection with that robbery and three others dating to 2010. So Crystal Little has been alleged to robbing at least four bank robberies. Kristen Little, this is the third woman, the third woman that's um, had some bad headlines out of Lexington. One woman threatens Mitch McConnell's life, writes a letter to him saying that she's going to kill him. And then you have um, one woman who's driving around drunk with her three baby kids. And then another woman here is Robin Banks. So, so these are... Ashley Judd is right, man. This is a Kentucky breed of women are a different, different breed of women. They can make sweet tea and dress real nice, but then they'll hit you with a left hook or some, some shit. They're tomboys. They're, they're sweet and tomboys. Ashley Judd said that they're either going to be the success of Kentucky or their downfall. So, um, Crystal Little is charged with two counts of first degree robbery and two counts of second degree robbery was being held at the Fayette County Jail. University of Kentucky spokeswoman Kathy Johnson said Little is employed at the university as an administrative support associate in the Office of Research Integrity. The office serves several review committees that monitor medical and non-medical research, including animal care and the use of radioactive research drugs. Little is a former Herald Leader intern. Developments leading to Little's arrest began unfolding shortly after 10 a.m. Saturday when police were called to investigate a robbery at a PNC Bank branch at 4080 Tate's Creek Center Drive. Police said witnesses there told them that a woman demanded money, then drove away in a gold Toyota that had been parked in front of the bank. Police said that the woman's face was covered by a pink toboggan, sunglasses, and a surgical mask. Following tips, police traced the Toyota to a home on Sugar Creek Drive where Little was arrested. In addition to Saturday's robbery, Little was charged in connection with robberies at a Fort Bank, F-O-R-C-H-T Bank, in Southland Drive in June 2010. A Fifth Third Bank on the Euclid, 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 on Euclid Avenue. E-U-C-L-I-D, which is uh, named after the man who wrote the elements. So some, some math knowledge there. In October 2010, in an uh, American Founders Bank on Walden Drive in August 2011. If you go to Lexington, actually, that's the only thing Lexington had. There's no skyscrapers. It's not a real city. All they got is a shitload of banks. Banks on every street. Banks on top of payday loaning companies. Payday loaning companies. Banks. Payday loan. Bank. Payday loan. That's all they got, payday loans and uh, banks. So they'll either take your money you know, straight from the paycheck and save it for you, or they'll you know, give you a check in the cash uh, two weeks in advance and then take that money from you. So either way, lots of motherfucking usury, usury uh, greedy uh, banksters trying to fuck the Lexington people over. So... So UK is hiring bank robbers and uh, Lexington women are uh, robbing banks and threatening senators and driving them drunk with their children. Recently, this is Kentucky. Uh, a Laurel County woman accused of trading her baby for an $800 truck is back in Kentucky on human trafficking and meth charges according to the Laurel County Police. A woman accused of trading baby for truck is brought back to Kentucky. Heather Kaminsky, 30, was apprehended in Florida after a joint effort between the Laurel County Sheriff's Office, the Putnam County, Florida Sheriff's Office, and the U.S. Marshal's Office. Laurel County, Detective Charlie Loomis, who made the 695-mile trip to Florida to return, Kaminsky arrived at the Laurel County Jail late Thursday, police say. The recipients of the child were arrested and lodged on felony human trafficking charges. Kaminsky will face the same charges along with other pending methamphetamine-related charges upon her extradition back to Kentucky. Detective Jason Back and Detective Brad Mitchell are continuing their investigation. Investigators say Kaminsky traded her six-month-old infant to a Corbin, Kentucky couple for a 1999 Dodge pickup truck, which she then sold for $800. A tip led police to Jeremy Brown, 31, and Jamie Brown, 33, who allegedly received the infant and are now charged with human trafficking. They remain in Laurel County Jail. 
That's fucked up. The Browns only wanted a kid, and she was willing to sell the kid for $800 just for a truck. So that's fucked up that they would go to jail. She's a bad person for selling them, but I don't know. I don't. I just don't feel like this needs to be worked out. You should not be putting the the people who actually give a fuck about the kids behind jail. That's ridiculous. And again, this is another woman um, in Kentucky. So Kentucky women, they're they, they're sugar and spice, right? <laughs> just like as the judge said. So, uh, a couple more things. Here's something out of um, Louisville. An armed robbery suspect was injured in Louisville earlier Sunday after a Kentucky state police officer shot him in the neck during a traffic stop, a state police dispatcher said. Aaron Hart, 20, of Hodgenville, where Lincoln's from, was taken to a university hospital for treatment of his injuries. Hart was not listed as a patient at the hospital Sunday, and his condition was not available. The incident started with an armed robbery of a pilot truck stop in Sonora, at about 1.26 a.m., the state police dispatcher said troopers were alerted to the vehicle description, and at about 2 a.m., 2.06 a.m., it was spotted headed northbound on Interstate 65, he said. Officers approached the vehicle once it stopped on I-65 North at the Waterson Expressway, and one of them saw the man reaching under his seat, the dispatcher said. Believing the man was armed after the truck stop robbery, the trooper drew his weapon and fired a single shot, hitting Hart in the neck. The dispatcher said state police identified the officer who fired his weapon as Jared Newberry, who's with the Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. Newberry has been with the state police for a year and a half. He's been placed on leave pending an investigation into the incident, as is the department's policy. After the incident, the I-65 interchange at the Waterson was shut down for about four hours, the dispatcher said. Hart has been charged with robbery, he said. So Aaron Hart, 20, of Hodgenville. He's robbing banks too, man. They're robbing banks. They're threatening senators, man. There's a lot of crazy shit that happens in Kentucky. Crazy, crazy Kentucky. Number one state for insanity in the country that's number one for insanity. Kentucky bluegrass. We know how to represent. Prosecutors say vote buy-in is a problem in eastern Kentucky, July 26. This was posted at WDRB.com. Louisville, Kentucky, an eastern Kentucky man admits he sold his vote in an election. Richard Moore says he charged $25 for his vote. Prosecutors in eastern Kentucky say that has been an accepted practice for decades. In the past two years alone, more than 20 public officials have pleaded guilty or been convicted in vote buying schemes. Moore testified he sold his vote to Michael uh, Sawyers, who is running for Breathitt County Magistrate. I had one gentleman come to me and say, Mike, I have got four votes, said Sawyers. He took them and voted, came back, and I gave him 100 dollars, twenty five dollars a vote. Another county prosecutor say the payoffs were done with drug money amounting to four hundred thousand dollars over several elections. So we Kentucky people we ain't voting, we robbing banks, we threatening senators, we driving drunk with our children. And what are we doing about all this? We ain't voting, twelve percent ain't voting, we ain't doing anything with the politics, we're not putting the blame where blame should actually go. I think the media is to blame, that's for damn sure. And also, uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt, they, they're not spending money on education or health care. They're not giving us the basic necessities that we need for life, but they are spending lots of money on prisons. Kentucky is number one for the fastest growing private prisons in, the, in, the, in America. Kentucky's continued to overspend on state prisons despite much effort in recent years to save money by reducing the inmate population. Lawmakers were told Thursday for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, the state corrections department needed to take $20.5 million from a necessary government expenses account in addition to the $477 million it was budgeted to spend. So they needed more money than what they were already budgeted. They're going over budget. This number of state inmates, including those serving time in prisons or local jails, is hold, holding fairly steady at slightly fewer than 22,000. So we got 22 people that's behind bars, Kentucky. Justice Secretary J. Michael Brown told a joint budget committee of the House and Senate members that's about 1,700 more inmates than predicted last year by budget forecasters who would hope to see a sharp decline. <laughs> Governor Steve Brashear and the General Assembly have worked to cut the inmate population through several measures. Most notable was a penal code reform in 2011 that was supposed to save an estimated $42 million a year, in part by shifting nonviolent drug offenders into a addiction treatment and community supervision. 
However, the corrections department has been slow to establish the addiction treatment programs necessary to help inmates return to society, lawmaker said Thursday. And the parole board is releasing fewer inmates than expected, although the board's chairman, Larry Chandler, said his colleagues are making thoughtful decisions in every case. So, we spend money on prisons, just not on the education and housing and clothing. Come on, Kentucky, we can do better than this. Occupy.